individuals have, have made it through the ranks, through getting stuff done, getting stuff done well, really driving um, incremental improvements, you know, running big de development teams where it's all about task and output, and then they're made into a, you know, a leader, you know, and you know, now we've got to make them strategic all of a sudden because that's what's going to help because that's what our view of senior leadership is, set vision, you know, take people with you, that type of stuff through through direction. And a lot of these individuals struggle with that because they, they, they've, they, they, they make an impact through and how they've risen through the organisation is then not what the organisation wants them to do in a leadership role. And I think that's, that, that causes a lot of senior individuals some distress and actually where they fail, I think organisations are losing this type of impact at a leadership level. So rather than saying maybe something simple, like rather than saying make this person strategic, you've got to be strategic now, something as simple as this is how you contribute to the process of strategy, this is how you contra contribute to the strategic debate, you're here to approve strategy rather than, 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 than create it. And yes. that all, you can see leaders then going, oh. Yeah. And the principle there is a very simple one of these are your strengths, play, play, to, them. play to them. Yeah and know what contribution in a complementary way that you can make in a team setting. I mean, you know, if you've got eight strategists sitting around the X code table, it's an, it, believe me, it's a nightmare. Yeah. We've, we've seen that. We've seen how that sort of homogeneity of talent actually gets in the way when there's an assumption that all these folk have to look the same. Uh, and it doesn't make for an effective collective impact. Well, we've seen the more forward-thinking organisations really generally focus their, their org structure, their reward structure, their frameworks as a team, genuinely as teams, because historically what organisations have done, they'll have collaboration as a value. You know, we're all collaborative, we want to build a collaborative culture, and you, know, you ask them, well, what's the... Give me a good example of collaboration here, and then they'll say, well, we have lunch and learns, and we all go out on a Friday together, or remember each other's birthdays, or whatever it might be, rather than genuine, impactful collaboration, which, which, is, which is a bit more difficult. Um, and I think where we're seeing that shift is because with that playing to strengths, if we can move to that team reward culture, team-based culture within organisations, then you get to play to strengths. So it's a bit like a a sports team you know if you are the striker then we're going to make you the best striker you can be rather than saying you're going to be do a do you defender. see that shift happening i mean it, i think to some that will feel quite quite radical given what we've been it, used to it's, 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 it is radical but we are seeing organizations making that shift but it has to be done at an organization frameworks reward structure level because otherwise you're telling people to be collaborative but what you're doing is you're rewarding them or bonusing them or measuring them individually and if you make that correlation between team sport, which is play to strengths, yeah. individual sports is I've got to develop my weakness, yeah, mm -hmm. because I need to be able to do everything. And I think that's where the, the conundrum is for a lot of organisations. But there are organisations getting it where we can move that team-based culture. We've moved a, a long way f from the question of a perfect leader, but just listening to you then, uh, certainly in conversations with people, um, thinking about teams, it, it's often been useful to think about how people step into a leadership space rather than having the formal authority of... Yeah. Uh, we, we assume that for, formal authority and leadership go together, that a CEO is a leader, and we all know that that's, that's a n n nonsense perhaps, but the idea that people can, whatever their proclivity, that they can say, hmm, this team needs some leadership from an implementer. Now we're all sitting around having the discussion. We got to get on and do something. Yeah. I'm going to take a lead, yep. uh, which is very different from this fixed, rather static notion of, of leadership as a role that people sit in uh, all, all the time and they have to polish up their skills to be good at it. Um, it just jars with common sense, doesn't it? Which yep. is curious business, but yeah. Yeah, and I think we what we we see a lot of organ. I think organisa a lot of organisations, particularly at the forefront of of, of change, understand this. Um, the 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 difficulty then is how do you actually do it? Yes. 
Um, and I think that's where obviously we, we come in and our, and our GC partners come in with, with their solutions of actually, we know you understand this, we know you need to do this, we know it's a bit of imperative. We know it's difficult, you know, but it should always be straightforward and, and here is a solution based around a language and framework of impacts and, and contribution that is inclusive. Um, and we'll show you how to, to do this because we get organisations that talk all about transformational mindset. Unless you can show people how they are contributing to transformation, I'm not quite sure how they're going to get a transformational mindset. So once you've got everyone understanding how they contribute to the transformation, you get a transformational mindset. Once you have people having transformational mindset, you have a transformational culture. I think that's really where we're showing people how to, how to get there.